Yeah. <laughs> is this talking about? I got a lung full of breath. Is this free? Can we talk freely 100%. here? One hundred percent. You can talk as freely as you want. Is my mic on, dude? We are. <laughs> this See is how like, form this is. <laughs> have you guys ever seen a movie, Dawn of the Dead? Like I have. Were there the breasts? Yes. Yeah. Are you the horror fan? Who's the horror He's, fan? I Jeff. Jeff. We'll tell off. All right, because we got to talk about 30, 30 days of night. Have you seen it? I saw it on Sunday. How was it? Oh, fucking dude. Were there breasts? In Did it? you like the thing? John Carpenter's movie. Well, the thing? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine <laughs> like the thing <laughs> with vampires. We could play nice. a whole new nice. set and still catch our breasts. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. So guys, thanks so much for coming out here, of course, and jamming with us. Did yeah. you have fun? Did you have fun with that? It was great. Yeah, had a great time. Extravagant. It was a hoot. Awesome. Is fun the the right word? Fun's awesome. This was cool. Fun. It's awesome. It's <laughs> fun. All right, well, let's go around the table right now. You, each of you give me a word that describes the experience you just had, besides breasts. Shit, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shit, yeah is like when you have the band Hell Yeah, we're going to start another band, we're going to call it Shit, yeah. What's it's going to follow Hell Yeah. And we're going to follow Hell Yeah on tour, and we're going to play the same city that they play every night at, at a club that, like, basically we're going to pull up <laughs> in an 18-wheeler right outside of where Hell Yeah is playing, we're going to play Shit, yeah. We're going to be like, guess what? Everyone that thinks Hell Yeah is cool, well, check out Shit, yeah. Shit, you know yeah, shit hell yeah. Well, dude, For we're sure. gonna start a Go Go's cover band and call it Fuck Yeah, just to upstage you. Dude, so, well, yeah. so, so check it out. It's gonna be like the, you know, ever God see like damn. one of those monkeys do each other's hair? It's gonna be like Hell Yeah, Shit Yeah, and Fuck Yeah. Well, we're gonna be it, just like that. Fuck Yeah, I'll go on Actually, first, Greg no is. Uh, <laughs> me and Greg pick lice out of each other's hair. Yeah, and that was as soon as he said basis, monkeys doing uh, each other hair, I thought about. Pretty funny. Pick lice out of each other's hair. Yeah. And yeah. Like the silver, silverbacks do and stuff. No shit. But now he's got now he's got beards. It's a mating. It's actually that too. It's a mating ritual. Like you know, if he goes down on a chick, you get any. Oh, hey, 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 Beaver and there's literally fans listening to this. Got, got a thing called Lady Remington. Got a bicket before you. <laughs> got a bicket before you lick it, babe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh snap! Oh, that was, you got that one. <laughs> you can have that one for free. I'm here every Friday. That one for free. <laughs> this thing on? It's totally on. Well, all because right. because there's people all around the world listening to this right now. Like anybody anybody in the world could be listening to this, uh, and it's radio. Hello, Tokyo. Can, can we go around and just everybody say like who they are? Who because the you know they yeah. just hear these disembodied voices, and uh, you know nobody has any idea who's who. So could you go around and just say hello and just say who we are? Why don't we start with Jeffrey Tuttle start over with there? JT over here. I'm Jeff. I play guitar in the Dillinger Escape Plan. And his phone number seven three four three four one five. What a I'm Greg Pachado. I sing in the Dillinger Escape Plan and shit, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm Gil. Play the drums. I'm Liam and I play the bass. <clears throat> I'm Ben. I play guitar. <laughs> Gotta say the rhythm section Guitar. is pretty fucking tall. Gotta say that the uh, we've got a very towering presence. <laughs> I know. Well, not really. I'm 4'11", but... <laughs> and I gotta talk, From too. You guys down. aren't wearing any pants right now. <laughs> what is this about? Breasts. It it's is about the breasts. man. <laughs> This guy's just interview just took a turn. From Paul's just gonna, he's gonna turn it into the Howard Stern Show outtakes. <laughs> we're working, <laughs> on, we're working on this. We're... It's all right, all right. Let's talk about the record. November 13th is the big release date. Let's, what, what can fans expect on here? A little bit of what they just let's heard, hear I'd say. New, well, let's hear the name of the new record and just tell us. Just roll. What do you got to say about it's the new record? It's called Ireworks. It's a it's a it's a piece that we've been uh, compiling over the last couple of years. Uh, we feel very proud of it. Um, and uh, Greg, why don't you talk a little bit about maybe the lyrical content that makes up this uh, piece of work? I won't really do that, but I will I say so. that uh, <laughs> that it's our best record to date. I'm just going to David Lee Roth this interview and. Say, this is the best record you'll ever hear in your life. You need to go out and buy this record. If you don't do anything else this year, please go out and buy the record. You'll do yourself a disservice if you never hear it or pay money for it. You really need to buy it. It should be on your CD player, not your iPod, in your CD player on November 13th. Or, or Jeff's going to come to your house. Well, it's and, a CD uh, player. Yeah, because I got <laughs> about 100 phone numbers saved. And I'm going to call every mother, motherfucker that called me. And, uh, he's gonna he's gonna trace it back and he's gonna come to your house and he's gonna I'm gonna punch you in the face. He's gonna suck you off and, until you die. 
until you die. Yeah. I'm gonna be, suck you off. Suck the dies. life out of you. I'm gonna <laughs> suck the fucking life force. I'm gonna suck your soul through your cock. Exactly. Ooh. Whoa. He's gonna yeah. suck your oh, cock shit. through your soul. Did you ever get a yeah, bar fight and say to someone? What? You fucking come near me, I'm gonna suck your soul through I'm your gonna, cock. He's gonna, he's, gonna <laughs> suck your, he's gonna suck your dick and fuck your dad. And, what and happened to that whole we have parents thing you guys were just chatting about? Yeah, you know. We were nice one. until we met you, man. Fucking A, that's you know, what you everybody said. You You're like, take your pants off. We're just like, what? And now we're always sitting there. I didn't even know what the word cock meant until I met you. You know, flopping around, just gotta clean the couch. Now there's things flopping. It's a, it's a nasty mess here. It sucks, dude. When you can scratch your ankle and your balls at the same time, you know you're Me getting old. Me and Greg are getting old. <laughs> yeah. I should have started wearing boxer briefs a long time. I wore boxers for way too long, you know? Now I got an itch on my knee and I accidentally scratch my sack. It's like, oh, it's bad shit. news. It sucks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. All right, so back back to the album then. Where did the inspiration come for this record? You said you've been working on it for a few years now. Claudio Sanchez was a huge inspiration <laughs> for us. A little, little, little band called Coheed and Cambria you guys might want to check out. Pretty much oh no. after they invented music as an after art After they form, invented inventing. After they invented inventing, at which point they invented music, at which point they then invented instruments with oh which to play. On the seventh day, they created... Uh, Apollo Genesis 37, know, uh, Noah's Ark, and uh, the Raining Blood. Something like that. Something like that. I definitely didn't invent a uh, scissors. That's for sure. Yeah, Claudio's hair actually affects <laughs> actually affects Ben's facial hair. So. Whoa. Speaking of pubis hair. Right. But no, seriously. Um, I mean, we've been writing this record for what two years? Probably two years. And it's it's kind of, I'm trying to reel it back in now, but sorry, so yeah, far. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's like, you're like everyone's like, yeah, talk more about sucking dicks and audio. Really and I'm just like, ah. Dude, here's the thing. <laughs> I, you know, I brought this thing, I've been like, okay, we'll go this way, we'll come right back on course, and then these guys are like, fuck the course. We lost and it. just go. We lost it. Kids have <laughs> been doing press all Kids week. at home now are like, did you hear? He was talking shit about Claudio. Ah! And so I, that's what they want from me, man. I'm like a monkey. They're just like, if I, if I get up and do serious, they're like, well, you stop talking shit about people. So I, I gotta, you know, start calling people it's out. Quota. That, that's quota. fair. That's I respect quota, that. You know? So is that, is that I boring? I love Claudio. Doing like, I doing him. press and like doing like this, uh, getting asked the same Questions like, so let's talk about the new album, or so let's talk about why you canceled the full tour. Full tour well, you know or, what, man? Like, you get tired of it, but then you have to think to yourself that if I was 10 years old, I would be stoked if some, if anyone wanted to know anything that totally. I had to say. You know what I mean? Some days you're like, ah, I had to do this interview today, it sucks. And you're like, wait a minute, it doesn't suck. Kind of, kind of rules asking, anyone that cares, you know? That's funny because trying to get him out of bed anywhere before 4 30 or 5 p.m. to do an interview. It's interesting because I miss, like, like, I miss every inventing, single interview you know, scheduled for me because I don't, I don't get up until like 4. But when I do do them, I'm grateful. I'm so, sure Ben's not grateful that he has to do every all the ones that I miss though. So. <laughs> Claudio Sanchez invented interviews. I think so. Did you really? Yeah. Yes. Incredible. For the, for the it's benefit like, it's of those like, who do not know who Claudio Sanchez is, could someone maybe give a thumbnail? He's the original guitar player. He in this is band. He's like a, Yahweh. He's like yeah. Jehovah, the unspoken. Like if you and if when people are like you know, Buddhists, like they say, the, the Buddha is like the answer to anything. They're like, what's four plus four? It's like Buddha, you know? So pretty much if you <laughs> answer any <laughs> what is question, the thing that's <laughs> any, any question the other night. if you answer any question with Claudia, you'll be right pretty much in the end. So it's not, I have no, you know, nothing against Claudia, man. So if you ever see him, give him a big hug for him. Tell him, tell him I love him because because of him, we got my main man, Gil Sharon. What's up, what's up? Right, you know what I'm saying? What's up? <laughs> Little guy named Gil Sharon. You guys might want to check out. He joined the band when, we, when he heard that we were going to call it Irie Works. Irie, Irie Works. Because you know, he's all about I, reggae. I, I, reggae drummer. Because he's so only reggae a reggae drummer. drummer. <laughs> I've, I've only know how to play reggae. These guys kind of molded <laughs> me. <laughs> you know, it was him and Uncle, <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Jesse. Uncle Jesse. <laughs> Uncle Jesse and the Beach Boys. According to half the kids that, like, you know, send MySpace messages to Gil or us, they're like, why did you guys get a reggae drummer? Because he's got some clips on, you know, YouTube of him playing reggae. But. Yeah, you know. I've so what do you have to say? It. What do you have to say about that, man? I mean, like, there's people listening and probably, you know, haven't heard you say much, I guess, right? So, tell us your story, man. Testify. Um, this playing will speak for him. Come yeah, on, I want you to show him what you're really good at. Oh damn, beefers, <laughs> man. Give me a minute. <laughs> let me let me fucking school these kids for a second. Seriously. <laughs> then I'll then I'll have fun. I just want kids to know, kids of all ages, because old people are kids too. People that have been listening to them, they're so ever, fucking Jeff the Wood. ignorant cats. I told you he was Jeff Wood. The ignorant cats. <laughs> um, let me tell you something, something about a thing called versatility. Exactly. And musicianship. And passion, and, and a Ch passion Ch for, for more than Ch one style of music. Take him to church. Take him to church, son. Preach okay. on, Brother Gil. So there's, there's, you know, through versatility, 
you, you, you are, are developing versatility, you are able, that means, for the people that don't know what versatile means, that means you could do more than one fucking thing. It's true. So, you know... Amen. Yeah, Amen. I, Amen. I like reggae. You can suck a dick and, and play with the asshole at the same time. <laughs> no, not me. It's a talent. Not me, boy. <laughs> yeah, but no, I, I play a lot of different styles of music, and I have a passion for a lot of different styles of music. So, you know, it's like... I think a lot of people, it's like the kind of thing where LSD. don't don't believe everything you fucking read in the paper or blah, 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 blah. It's like you see one thing or you read some press clipping or you see me with like brushes in my hand and then I'm like, you know, I got pigeon held for the, as the Beach Boys drummer for the longest time. Just because he was on Full House. Because people, yeah, it's just whatever. Come on, whatever. man. A little Alex. But Being anyway. Rash as a teenager. You, you have to agree, though, that your versatility and your ability and kind of passion for these other styles of music has certainly enhanced your playing ability. Oh, rules. Of course. Well, we would have never course, even gotten some dude who's going to come in and grind the whole no, thing. No, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. The, because a lot of people so just think if something's so. fast and heavy, then, oh, my God, that's the best drummer they've ever seen. But they don't realize Sorry. a lot of those guys, that's all they're able to do. Right, right. And do you hear something music, else. You, you, you see those influences coming oh, yeah, out. Well, you see those breakdowns like that. And that's why I was so excited to come, come in here, because I knew Dillinger had, you know... They weren't just one thing, and their music no, was just... there's five of us. You know? It's just... It's all over the place. So, yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm so, over it. So does anybody else in the band have any kind of like what you would call... I know I'm opening, leaving myself wide open for an answer to this question, but are there any other unpredictable influences in the band? Like, in terms of like... Is it good know, deformities? <laughs> um, I mean, twins? we're influenced by everything. It's not, you know, a lot of people, like, think that, you know, you listen to this type of music that you're just going to walk around all day. Or that you play this type of music, you walk around all day listening to this type of music. It's really not the case, you know? Like, we listen to all kinds of different, different stuff, and I think that's what keeps our music fresh, is that we pull our influences from other places, but then channel it through mm. this type of music. Like Instead Six of, Feet Under, for Like instance. Six Feet Under, Nickelback, and Lil Wayne, you know? We, we, we pull from all over the place. White Lion... White snake. No, it is, that is funny. You are white. wearing a, uh, a white lion shirt. So are you, you're, you're, like giving, uh, you're giving a shout out to Vito Brada tonight? Who? Uh. <laughs> isn't, that the, isn't, isn't, isn't that the name of the guitar he player? He just likes to get that the white lion. What, what's the song? That's, 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 that's a spirit, spirit animal. animal. Oh, on, we had, yeah. I just like a white lion that's just yeah. coming that's at you bad. on my shirt. Just, I mean, try to imagine I mean, it's anything a white more... Lion. Like it's like Sick Feet and Roy's you know, pornographic dream right here. Like when fire is so hot that it's white, just imagine like a blazing <laughs> white fireball coming at you. When it kind of gets close to you, you're like, oh shit, that's actually a lion? It's not, it's, you, know? you know, maybe it's just because I'm an old motherfucker, but that just reminds me of an 80s metal band that had this song Was called it? Wait, and they were from New Jersey. They were? Yeah, they were like the band that like wasn't as big as Damn, Bon Jovi. Were they good? Because wait. I'm wearing the shirt. Yeah, remember what? Yeah, wait. 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 Exactly. I never fun. had a chance to Dude, run. yes. I never had a chance to run. We go back. When the children cry. That's what we were just saying. I thought that was Neil Diamond. That was another one. When the ch oh, wow. You're wow. definitely Dude, pulling it out, man. When no. the children cry. I love that. No, Mike, uh, what was your name? Sweet Mike Carolina. Carolina. Oh, no, they had a record. They were, honestly, they were honestly one of my favorite bands at the they time. They That Pride record. Yeah. And big game, who? Liam yeah. fucking hot shit. Well, I was nine years this? old. I was did not listen to this. I did too. White Lion listened to like had a record called Pride. No, no, no. Yeah, Pride. White Lion, big you know, Pride, like a lion. I hear a you, man. Sound, so there's you know? not just one. They had like the, it was like really lions. the first political record I had. It was a lion sitting outside of the White House in like all these <laughs> amber waves of grain. It was. Can well, we talk a little bit about something called lioness. A lioness. Lioness. Now that we. Lioness, like the Charlie Brown character, or lioness, like a woman lion. No, like snarf. Oh my God! You know yeah, dude. wait, what? Like no, snarf. the Thundercats. Thunder. Thundercats. <laughs> You're like, I don't know whether they the hear only you. the only yeah, black cartoon. Yeah. It's true. Besides yeah, Panth Panthor. Uh, Panth what was it called? Oh, Thundercats. Thundercats. You never heard of Thundercats? Yeah, no, I heard thunder, of thunder, Thundercats. Thunder, 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 all right, well, let's talk about that then. Let's talk about some of the, the shows and the the old school TV and stuff that have, that have influenced you guys to, Say to who you are today. No doubt. Full house. Have you ever AC Slater your toilet before? Have I? No, but if you really want to get into this with me, I could go for hours. I, will, I all actually. These what the hell is AC Slater? You know, when you AC your Slater toilet? a chair, you, you, you flip it and sit on it backwards, you know? The other day. Yes. The, other, the, other day yes. the other day, I was in the bathroom and I thought about how rad it would be to try to Slater the toilet. Did you seriously do it? <laughs> I, I swear to God. I had to shit. I had to shit, and I was gonna <laughs> slater the toilet. 
but uh, I, I sat on it, but because of the way you're kind of angled, like if you shit, it's gonna blast the shit right <laughs> yeah, over the, plus, the like, lid, flush, like onto like, the floor. Give you some sort of weird ass tingling I'm, motion. I don't know, but I'm gonna try like, it again. We're all about sure. the tingle. <laughs> yeah, we got we're all about the tingle and any tingle. Tell tingle. Tell me, bro, you gotta, if tingle. you have a sleeveless shirt on, flip, you know, pop a backwards cap on your head did, and slip your toilet. Did you ever say sup preppy? When What's he that? did it, Sup when he preppy. sat. Sup preppy. preppy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talking, sat. talking to the to the wall. Yeah, talk, talking about that little cover that you take off to fix it's your toilet. It's a little photo of Zach up there. Right. Sup preppy. Sup preppy. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right, so what else is going on? What's up with tour? Well, Zach Morris is <laughs> a pimp, man. Yeah. <laughs> right now, Ben Seriously. has a cane, so we're not on tour. Speaking right, of right. pimps, yeah, I got, I got a cane. We changed fix your face to fix your foot in honor of Ben. That's what we should call it tonight. what happened, I was doing Pilates with Bon Jovi at the Hamptons. He farted. I laughed. I fell over and twisted my ankle. That's oh. dude. Story over. So Done. Next. next. Topic. What's it? Dude, I was thinking about f fix your face and how we were gonna call it fuck face. Do you remember the Cal Ripken baseball card with the fuck no, face? No, it was Billy back? Ripken. Billy Ripken Wait, had what? a bat that said yeah. fuck face on the end of it. Yeah, and it was like made a, like a couple. It was a baseball card and right on the because no one right would on call Cal Ripken fuck face because dude's just a bat. That's what he well, named his bat or something. No, yeah, I don't know if it was like. There was some kind of typo no, it's a, with it's, it. Yeah, it someone a wrote fuck face on the Dude, end of Dude, I love back. that kind of stuff. I worked at a toy store once, and there was a doll with nipples. Loser. What? But I'm just saying that there's all these sort <laughs> of like genitals too. Out of your stuff. No, no. But what else did you guys caught on to like that? Are you sure it was a doll? Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Have you guys seen that real doll documentary? What kind of toy store were you at? That's the question. If it wasn't a doll toy store, it was KB. Come on, man. The motherfucker had to have nipples. It's all right. Oh yeah, man! You guys uh, see that real doll documentary? Yes, dude. No, what? The documentary you know you can go to... about the people who have relationships with real dolls. Dude, go to real doll. I'd see the real doll. Dot com, real doll. Dot net. J dog. You can yeah. make like his name was? dolls. They look like there's, people. There's and a movie they show out up. called The Real Girl, and it's a, yeah, yeah. Like it's about, some, like, you can order a real doll. It's about a doll with nipples, basically. Yeah. Well, it's about a, it's, he thinks <laughs> that the woman is actually like alive. I think is what it is. It's that's how you, I, that's you know a problem for Jeff too. You know, so my life. <laughs> what, blow, like latex dolls? No. That's that 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 you have talks about this Tiffany with? girl all the time. We've never met her. He fucks them and alive, but then... <laughs> you open up the door, she pops exists. out and just says Tiffany on her head. <laughs> it's like Weekend oh, at Bernie's. God. Oh, I <laughs> love that. Weekend at Bernie's. So we were talking about TV, and, you know, we, we touched on Thundercats, Save by the Bell. What else is out there you guys dig? Um... Um... Dicks. <laughs> right. <laughs> Riding them, sucking them, sucking <laughs> them. God. <laughs> God. I don't know if you guys know this, but um, you, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But um, you wouldn't know this specifically, but um, Pearl Jam was into you, was pretty into you guys. Shut no. up. No, I'm going to tell you a story. This I'll is, lose I, my mind listen, right now, dude. All right, just listen, oh, okay? Oh God, I'm about to lose my mind. Oh, here's the beer. Super new on the Beatles. I want to be, yeah. We're not, not going to talk about Cox for the next two minutes. Okay? We won't. More because because we will shut up. We will lower the yeah, silence yeah, because I love that band. I'm going to totally fucking tell you I'm a story. I'm about to write a story. If you tell me. We were talking about what happened to Dave on the way over. We were. If you told me that Eddie Vedder has even ever heard of Jonas Kaepernick's song, I'm going to There's this guy named Tim Bierman, right? And he did all of Pearl Jam's website shit. Right. And I used to work for Epic Records. And we did the, this binaural record, and Pearl Jam was going to do a chat on Lycos. Right. So we, it was their first chat as a band. So I flew out to Seattle. They we never went to their studios. Before? They never did an online chat as a whole band. Oh, right. Okay. This is like 2000. Uh, it was, I don't know, it was like five breaking. years ago. So anyway. They're a band. So, these guys, so basically, I asked Tim, because we were going to ask him questions about what music they were into. Right. And he's, I'm like, you know, what are Eddie and those guys listening to right now? And he's like, they're really into this band called the Dillinger Escape Plan. You have got to be I, He fucking me. said it right to me. And and he and they, I was there with the band when we were talking Eddie. about it. Boys, we're going on tour. Eddie's on tour. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the deal. We we made made it. Here's the deal, oh, Eddie. Made it. Eddie, 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 get in contact me. I've been waiting to sing Hunger Strike with you for about 15 years. Dude. I'll do the Cornell part. You can do the... I don't mind stealing bread. And I'll be like, I don't mind. It'll be killer, dude. <laughs> Call me up. Get in touch. Let's we got some it. people that might know me. Might know you. Already, exactly. This is what I'm talking yeah. about. We'll go to the beach. We'll have a big bonfire. We'll just rock out in long shorts and combat boots, and it'll be killer. I actually saw Temple of the Dog play that live. Oh wow, my dude! Gigs. Oh my god! Oh my god! You guys ever hear of Concrete? Yes. Ah. Metal? metal? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say what that was. Uh, we're just getting started in the party. Oh, yeah. Yeah. just the beginning. Concrete yeah, used to have this metal convention in, um, in L.A., and it was called the Concrete, Concrete Foundations. Right. Yep. And, um, and one year, when it, it was like the LAX. Right. And one year, like Pearl Jam played and Soundgarden played. It was, um, 
Bad Motor Finger. Oh my oh god, my dude. And so like, yeah, seriously, it was like before the record came out and they did like Jesus Christ poses. Of stuff. course, but Chris Cornell's hair was just down to his knees yeah, yeah. Was, wailing like he, a banshee like, he dude. He was body surfing and shit. It 19 was, like, bracelets on each Alice arm. Alice in Chains played. Like it was dude. King's X played. Wow. It was like when new metal was like that. You know? You're making me want to cry, dude. Like straight up. Dude. But seriously, they came out to play, and everybody was like, "Holy shit, Temple of the Dog's gonna play live!" Right. And the whole time, Chris Cornell jumped on, got on Eddie, Eddie Vedder's back, and Eddie got on Chris Cornell's back, and they just did the whole thing. Is they were doing like a chicken Eddie fight Mac. singing. Chicken you like fight. Master dude, Blaster. Genius. They were just like um, they, were, they, were, they were just like, like fucked dude, up. Dude, like, so like, happy, of yeah, we were, yes. we were yes. like, we were like, we were gonna see fucking <laughs> Ultron and Grunge. Temple of the Dog play live, and they're playing Hunger oh, Strike, man. and they just like basically just like they played like three songs, and they were so wasted, they just did the whole thing as a goof. So exactly. I know the feeling. <laughs> People, who are kids out there listening, like, what are the old dudes are talking about Pearl Jam and Soundgarden. You guys are wrong, 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 we wrong. A, we did a cover of Soundgarden and put it on our MySpace, and all these kids were like, "I don't really like the direction you guys are going." <laughs> Jesus Christ, folks! That song, oh, really? Soundgarden, yeah. that you guys, your new direction. I'm not really that into that, you know. There's like a couple bands that, ever, that matter really, ever. Bye. All Thank right, you. So, and, and, and Soundgarden and is one of them. Soundgarden is sure. one of them. Yeah. Have you, did you ever get to see them live? Yeah, I saw Soundgarden yes. like. At, like in like '94, and like I I had never seen him before, and I wasn't like where'd you see him? That into him? Was um, it the solo? Was it were they headlining or was no? It like, they weren't headlining, and uh, cause they they opened up for Neil Young in those. Days. I saw them open up for Neil Young, and they opened for for Guns N' Roses, believe it or not. Too. Yeah, I heard they they opened that tour. I wish I, I would have seen. I saw them on Super Unknown. It was crazy. Yeah, I'm, dude, I'm I was mind so stoked. Yeah. Yeah. So stoke. changing. I love that. I saw Kim awesome. Chains open up for Van Halen. Whoa. Are you serious? Really? Yes, I did. I saw Alice in Chains open up for King's X at the Limelight. Oh my God. I, was I was supposed to see Alice in Chains op open for Megadeth, Slayer, and Anthrax at the Clash of Titans tour, and at the last minute, uh, I, my mother prevented me from going because I was only like 10 years old and she didn't let me go. Oh, I, I, I saw Pussy. I saw Limp right? Biscuit open Poser. for Faith No More. Dude, you saw you that? Now. You know what? Saying you saw Limp Biscuit is kind of like saying open you saw for the Faith Backstreet no more? Boys. They only got through like I'm, three songs when crazy? I saw them. They got booed off stage. Yeah, oh, they, it was comedy. Yeah. Yeah, album of the year tour. But you know what's funny mm -hmm. is that for a moment in the 90s, Fred Durst was like the savior of the record business. Well, are you remember, kidding me, man? You know, the that's what they want. Get the hell out of the room. We gotta go. Thanks, kids. We gotta go. They gave him a record label. Get out of here, dude. They gave him a label. They gave him millions of dollars. Yeah. Just all all this record label. What did he do with it? Do you remember the nothing. whole thing? He did nothing with it. When everybody was like, oh, that's who Limp Bizkit is? It was that MTV thing, that spring break thing where they Where they blew up the little thing? Where they do the runways. You know when the models come? Totally. Limp Bizkit came out to these college kids and just absolutely Rock and all these college kids were like, dude. Did you just what? say that Limp Bizkit absolutely dude, rocked you? Saw just when they cut it out, dude. Cut it shit. out. You're just fucking. I was sleeping that <laughs> ten years. <laughs> the, I got took a nap for like a few years. Because there's certain shit that's not cool. Kurt Cobain killed himself. Yeah. Certain guys that could never rock, that dude. Was, that was like the day the music died. Things got really rough after Kurt Cobain. Like the day like, the music died was the day, was the day that Soundgarden broke up. Like Nickelback. Nickelback is cool because it's funny to turn it up and like fucking cut the bottom of your t-shirt off and rage, but. Limp Biscuit is not even funny, ironically. It's like, not, man. You can't even. That's you can't even you know any no, kind no, no, of ironic. Wait a minute, wait a minute. To this day, it's not even, even if you ironic. Think it's lame, you can put on, you know, give me something to break, and you'll just start breaking everything it's in true. the room. We really you, 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 like, you have to embrace it. <laughs> you know, like seriously, it's insane. You Turn have to embrace on. it, seriously. If you, you know. You ever want to get a party started like and everyone's just wasted and you're like shit yeah come and, on dude, if the nookie no, came on right now dude, tell me if the nookie came on and you just dimed it dude just turned dude, it up to you ten have, you would be like yeah and you, it would, right everyone who has a beer hat on it would look like can't hardly wait nine and you would be like yeah that's, uh, <laughs> you know what that's that's what we call a guilty pleasure my friends exactly so let, thank you the yeah, definition you know of what? guilty it's pleasure it's for comedy you know we'll play Jim let's go through here now. You know, we've opened up one door. It's but a limp keep it what else you guys have? Guilty pleasure. Nickelback, right now. just diamond it, dude. If you put on that song, it's like, I was going to bound and die. What's, what's the song? Just a couple <laughs> animals. animals. <laughs> dude, if you just put that on and crank it, dude, in no time, you're like, yeah. And you just want to pour, Jesus. pour beer on someone's <laughs> head. And you're just like, yeah. All right, let's talk about, let's talk about, <laughs> let's on. talk about Zach Wilde's In This River. In This yeah. River, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do okay. yourself a favor. In we're This getting, River. Do yourself a favor. Go to, go to YouTube. That's a diamond that wants and, to stay And cold. look up the uh, In This River video. <laughs> Dude, he's playing a guitar solo 
Stand, double neck guitar solo in a river. In a river, and then dude. He smashes he's the straight up. I've seen this. The video amazing. starts, yeah, and he's in a river it's playing a piano. It's then amazing. He, then he beats the piano up with a hatchet. Now and he's then he, Zach he's playing a guitar fan. solo, yeah. and he gets done playing it, and then he runs away for he some reason. There's shit on fire, some, even though it's in a river, which is kind of impossible. Like, I don't even know how to fix it. Guns N' Roses did the November Rain video. They had to pass the torch to somebody. That's true. That's true. You know? Actually, somebody told me that Zach Wilde called us a bunch of faggots. You guys? Yeah, how did he know? It's pretty true. Yeah. How did he know? It's pretty true. <laughs> is that real? Like, yeah. really real? Wait, who told you that? But really I didn't have a beard real? then. I didn't have a beard then. All right. And the cane so is pretty I bad. Understand. You know what? I, I gotta ask you, man. Is that He's a fucking sword cane? I got it at the Why, dollar store for a dollar, the line, you'll so find I mean, out. if it had a sword in it, they're really up in the ante <laughs> over at the dollar store. I'll tell you that much. Do you beat orphans with that cane? I fuck orphans with this cane, man. What do I look like a pussy? Come on, now. Cane looks pretty pretty hardcore, man. So you guys I'm a have pimp, had... dog. I'm love. I'm about love. Yeah. He's, he's like the guy. On, he's like the guy on Boys table. to Men that walks around and doesn't sing, but then he just strolls and, and crawls like, with the cane and says some real deep. Yeah, baby. He just goes like that. They're all harmonizing. He's like, rib it, the end of the road, rib it. <laughs> you know? He's like real low and deep. Fucking big ass cock coming out of the bottom of his pants. Exactly. Just fucking <laughs> just women just creaming everywhere. Shock cock, cock dude. Yeah. Fucking Shock Anna, cock dude, dude, he comes in with his cane. He comes in with a cane and an anaconda <laughs> comes out of his pants. Oh, a big yeah. anaconda just jumps out of his pants. It's true, grabbing chick. It's true. And he grabs J-Lo by the ankles and drags oh, her into God. a spot. fucking... All right, man, you got off the hook without giving your guilty pleasure, but you were taking a shot at everybody Kimbo else's. Slice. Who? Kimbo Slice. Who? Kimbo Slice. That's a guilty pleasure. There's guilty about like Kimbo Slice. That's obvious. Dude, they chopped him out of a block of ice, and then he just started beating the shit out of everyone. He thought him out. They found him inside the belly of a woolly mammoth. I think so. I think so. <laughs> that sounds like something Will, Will Farrell would say. Yeah. Know, are you like the Will Farrell of the band, dude, or what? <laughs> I don't know. Am you I got, you got the, you got the, you got the kind of uh, bro fu kind of uh -huh. facial hair going on. He's the Will Flowers of the. <laughs> let's right. talk about. Other, yeah, can right. we talk about other guilty pleasures for a second? Yeah. Because. Let's, like let's we, this is a little, uh, something we just realized recently. Like a lot of times, people go hang, you know, listen to this kind of music. They act like they hate like everything else. Like I hate like stuff that's on the radio. And oh, like yeah. when they when they go out to hang out, they're like, we're gonna go to this bar and it's gonna be dark and little. We're gonna listen to like rock music real loud. We're gonna sit in the corner and talk about how much everything sucks. You know, dude, totally the wrong thing, dude. You go to a bar that, where they're just playing like you know T-Pain and Fabulous and Little Wayne at, yeah. at the maximum yes. volume dude that's Hell where the yeah. fun is you don't have fun sitting in a corner on, listening man. to Jesus and Mary Bumping Chain and you know what I mean which is cool you know but I mean if you go seriously go cry you, together you know? no no fuck that dude that's you go not. to the, the, the clubs where all the so retards you, go and you guys dance then Oh we yeah, dude. Come on, we oh, that's, that's that's how, seriously, if you if you, you know, want to go off, dude, you go to a bar like that because all the dudes there are just dorks and they go and they're just like standing there in like a, the tightest black button down they have and it's gelled hair and they're just waiting. They're just standing in the corner waiting for like some drunk girl to just grab, to fall on their penis and it never happens. Dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? So all those girls just want to dance. Like, so if you go, like, if you're goofies? if you're Ben Wyman and you just walk into that place, you don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? You're, you're pimping, just, dude. You're I, come like, from kid, I come from the time of he like, comes in and starts moonwalking and doing the worm all of a sudden every chick yeah, loves these him. kids don't know about you nothing know what what I mean? about the worm and the moonwalk and the kid and play off. and all that shit we got in there. pretty high for somebody who's uh, down with kid and play man dude come on say. man and they're on they're on I the right i come from a too. time from you know a bust a move you know this year it's a cheer for all the fellas trying to get what them ladies tell us get shot down because you're overzealous play hard to get three mans get jealous you know what i'm saying like it wasn't about big pants it was about just it was about partying, can we get you know what i mean it was about shooting each other it was about i want to rock right now i'm partying i'm on base and i came to get down i'm not internationally known, you know? but I'm known to rock a microphone because I get stupid. I mean, outrageous. Say for me. It's contagious, man. I'm a loser. Being MC is what I choose. The ladies love me, girls adore me. I mean, even the ones who never saw me like the way that I rhyme at a show. The reason why, yo, I don't know. So let's go, cuz. It takes two to make a thing go right. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's the time, man. You go, you go to the club and, and you know, come on. Just. Have a good time. Stop Come hanging on, out. Don't matter. So, what's your best dance move, hands down? We all link hands. <laughs> we link penis. We link yeah. our penis. Oh, here we go. I don't know, man. <laughs> Come on. We do the no, Care Bear what, stare. Like, what's, what's your signature? Like, you know, like, you're like, all right. The worm, dude. Ben's is the worm. Really? And, like, Ben does a wicked worm. The windmill on the pit. <laughs> <laughs> My dude. favorite dance move is the change picker up or whatever the hell they call it. <laughs> <laughs> 
I wouldn't make a quarter snatch. Do we? We made it. A, uh, a, we have a new one. Instead of like picking up change, you throw it up in the air and then catch it, dude. So instead of like, so instead of, instead of this, bending over, right. like reaching for shit, you're just swiping at shit like a cat in the air, dude. Yes, yeah. that's, that's the move. That's the move. <laughs> has has anybody like in the pit at your shows actually done that? Are you kidding, dude? It's all the rage, man. It's the last time you've been out. <laughs> Most of the time, it's actually just Greg looking for change on the floor. Yeah, that's, that's like why kids I, like, I don't pick up change at shows because I just do it in the street. We're like, that guy's hard, good dancing. I'm like, no, son, I'm just homeless. I'm just, poor. I'm just in the Dillinger <laughs> escape plan. Well, let's that's talk a little roll. bit then about like, some of your stage antics, the, the fire breathing, some of the crazy cool shit that goes down. Crazy Cool was a TLC album. <laughs> crazy Sexy Speaking Cool. Speaking of the time, man, that was the time was about calm in your eye. I want to send. I want to say that Left Eye was beautiful, and I wish she was still alive. You know, if she got reincarnated, call me. You can burn down my house anytime. Aaliyah, I mean, Aaliyah was, too. T Boz was the hottest one, man. Yeah, yeah I, I'm yeah. the only one here who thinks T Boz was pretty hot. Right. Right. Left Eye was crazy. Was though, the other one? She was hot, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, the other one was super hot. The one that dated Usher. The one that dated Usher. What's the other one? The long hair. Chili. Chili's really hot. Chili pepper. She was that hot in that water. Falls video. Yeah, she, she was hot, hot but yeah. T Boz people don't give her the attention she deserves. She was T-Boz hot, man. Like a dyke. Just be so what? Right. Dykes are hot. T Boz didn't look like a dyke. Come on. Come man. on. Come on, man. Come on. She 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 was chasing waterfalls, all right. You know what I'm saying? Little fucking pussy waterfall. Little, little <laughs> drip. She was chasing the drip. God. She was chasing the drip. Just, come on, man. I'm fucking speechless. <laughs> all right. So we you know, one, of, one of the things we wanted to ask you guys about, just on the on the on the serious, on the really real real, was. Uh, the whole kind of like in today's modern music environment. Uh oh, shit. Right. <clears throat> Let's get serious. You guys, manage, get you guys manage yourselves. We do. We do. Which is a real different thing because you know we we get all sorts of managers that come through yeah. here who right. do all sorts of things from going outside and smoking cigarettes to yeah. you know making people, sure people show up on time. You guys obviously do that all that shit for yourselves. Right. Um, so can you talk a little bit about in 2007, like relative to like oh, over the past five years, a lot of shits happened. So where where are you at in terms of like being a DIY band and doing doing what you want to do and and do it musically and just in terms of managing yourself and shit? I want to turn this over to Ben because he's he kind of handles most of our self management. Before I do, I would I would like to say that although we do not need a band manager, I need a life manager. So if there's yes, anyone out there that will be willing to manage a human being, you know, yeah, I, I, I think that's it, called a wife, dude. Direction. Yeah. She just takes everything that, you know, usually anything that's fun and just says, Personal you're not going to do this anymore, and then your life is managed. Let's need someone to be like, don't do that. That's really going to be bad for you down the road. And I'm like, okay. You know, cause yeah. Right now, it's spiraling towards disaster. I'm just try, riding this wave out. You know? Yeah, so, I was actually going to offer to manage Greg at, for a percentage, but a percentage of homeless sucks. It totally yeah. sucks. So, <laughs> uh, totally a percentage sucks. of Dillinger dollars is really a very, very small ben, fraction. Ben, talk about the... The well, we, we are living in an ever-changing time of mass media, and the record business is changing rapidly. There's never been more forms of ways of distributing and <laughs> promoting yourself as a band. Internet sites such as MySpace has made the playing field much more... I don't know, man. <laughs> Just fucking do it. Yeah, if you're... You know, if you, like, if you, seriously, the point is this. The point is this. It's like, you know, managing a band is like... I mean... It, it, Imagine your own band may not be for everybody, but it's enabled us to survive. You know, not not really having people take a cut out of our pie is what makes us go. And I mean, we know bands that are ten times bigger than us that that, that uh, probably come home with less money than we do it's at the true. end of a it's tour. It's giving so, legit managers uh, the chance you know. to go find bands that they will actually make money managing. <laughs> I mean, oh. saying you're not that cash crop. <laughs> In other That's words. <laughs> I sure. got a safe under my pillow full of money that these guys don't know about now. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it, yeah. it's just, the point is, is that, uh, it, I mean, this is a good time because there are, the, the, like, we see the Radiohead record coming out where they're actually put not only, you know, it's not even about just managing yourself. I mean, bands are putting out their own music and, I mean, it's reported that they made millions and millions of dollars in, like, the first hour or something. True. Well, so, they sold, I mean, if, if they sold just a million copies, right? Right. And if you think that they may be sold, like, okay, if you're on a major label mm-hmm. and you get, Let's let's say a royalty rate is twenty percent, right? And if, but it's twenty percent of what after well, costs? Like, even blah, if you know, so what do you make per record? These well, guys the made, thing. you know, if they sold a million records and they yeah. sold them for eight dollars, they had eight million dollars in their bank account. Like, the well, next you got to realize that you know, record like bands, you know, the way record labels work is that you know, while they front you the money to initially make the product and promote your music. There's, you're, they're just lending you a bunch of money. So, I mean, until they're paid back 100% in full, and that's assuming that they're honest about it, which is usually not the case because it's so easy to confuse those accountings, that, that most likely the band really isn't making a whole lot of money off record sales. So for, for a band like Radiohead, I mean, even if the average, uh, you know, the average amount of money somebody paid for that record 
was five dollars. Like some people paid ten, some people paid nothing. They made way more. You know what I mean? They're still made so much more money, so much more money. Even if they got paid from the label, like what are they going to get? Two, three dollars off a record? That much, but you know what I mean? So let me ask you a question. Well, it's just so like you know, like managing your own band is just an extension. It's just another example of ways to cut out. You know, ways optimizing the circumstance. You know, do you guys uh, do you guys have do you own your masters from your previous records? So that they own no, by see that's companies? I mean, could you we, talk about that a little bit about what that's like? Because what's is your new deal like? How is your new deal working? And well, how do we you don't have really that? a new deal. This is our we we've the only label we've ever been on is um, is Relapse Records, our label, okay. and, and it's an indie label, and you know they've been real. Oh snap. There's been a whole, you know, they they they're a really cool label. They stay true to to the music they like, and you know that we've worked together to, um, you know, they've grown as a label, we've grown as a band. But there's a glass ceiling when you get to a certain size where you're not dealing with major distribution and things like that, and you can't get your records. I mean, we pretty much when we put out our last record, Miss Machine, we pretty much sold out of every record that was literally on the shelf. And it, you know, and people are like, well, you didn't sell as many as this band or that band. How many you know, because there weren't as many on the you know, show. I was like, you know? we literally How? sold out of like every CD How that was available. How many you know, I think press? they put out like forty thousand CDs. You know, <laughs> initially. You know, so I mean, and by the time they replenish that, and you know, and then it, it's so it's, and then by that time, you know, I mean, everyone's downloaded it. Right. You know, right. and so records. You know, it's really for us. It's Not. a different ball. It's been a different ball game for us from the beginning. You know, we don't really look at numbers. We don't look at that. The bottom line is like we're we're a real band. Like we are real. Like what you see is what you get. It's not like a false economy with us. It's not like okay, you heard this band's giant and they sold this many records and blah blah blah. And it's like okay, and you go to see them play for the first time, not on a giant bill, not on Ozfest, not with like ten, 10 other big there. bands. And there's like ten people there. You know what I mean? Like we are what we are. We're the same size in New York that we are in London that we are in Australia yeah. that we are in Tokyo. And it's not like a giant, giant band, but like we're a working band. Like well, this so is what we do. You a know? lot of giant bands become giant because they have to make commer- they make decisions and make commercial compromises god damn there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of gas in this there's a lot of peeping and popping you, in here so, so anal Tourette's <laughs> so so like a lot of bands have had to make commercial compromises or creative yeah. compromises to get to that marketplace have you ever for a moment had anybody suggest to you like hey maybe if you did this or sounded mm-hmm. like this or make a vi- made a video well, like did, this or- there were any any time you sell like the circumstances that we have been in haven't been conducive to like selling a lot of records or getting a lot of attention honestly under in normal circumstances like a band like us has been pretty much considered the antithesis of marketable and like you know like pop it you know up when we first started you know people were just like this is noise this is you know if we were lucky they called it or c- controlled noise you know like that was like <laughs> the like generous you know ter- you know definition of and so for us i mean anyone who sells that many records or does that well or gets that kind of press or attention on an indie label with those circumstances you're gonna get on the radar of big labels and things like that so i mean yeah like before we put out our second record we had major labels trying to sign us and buy us out of our deal and this and that whatever but again like you know fortunately you know we we had enough experience with friends who were signing to big labels and this and that and whatever to know that it was all about accounting you know it had nothing to do with art or music and we have nothing against big labels or bands that signed to big labels but just as long as they realize the circumstance like you know we were more interested in becoming a career band than like a one hit wonder right. so for us you know doing something that would be that detriment could be that could be that detrimental to us that soon in our careers was just not something we were interested in we realized that if it was going to take this many hundreds of thousands of dollars to get us out of our deal initially then they were going to spend you know a million or two million dollars on promoting and putting out the record and spending way more on our record recording than we probably need and way more on you know flying out a and r guys to see if you know it sounds okay and this and that whatever we knew we were going to have to sell you know 500 600 thousand records before they even break even and and to go from you know being a big independent band that's doing well and the biggest you know selling band on our label or something to to uh you know trip doubling what we normally sell wasn't exactly realistic unless we had to compromise what we did and unless we had to like um go into some kind of formula that they were used to doing in order to sell records and when we talked to these labels we weren't against it if it was going to enable us to do what we do better you know like up our live show maybe you know whatever you know be in better circumstances but we saw that there was no way under those circumstances at that time 
with that kind of money it would have taken to get our band up and running after already being on a label and already having to put money into this and that whatever that we would be able to be successful in their eyes in the eyes of the accountants and that's what it was all down to and with that said there was probably going to be people trying to you know tell us how to do things in order to make it work and and that wasn't an option for yeah, us. Yeah, there's that no was, label that would say, okay, yeah. I'm going to buy you out of your deal for a couple yeah. hundred grand, produce right. a record, be, be into you guys yeah. for a million dollars, and then be happy with you. And there's people have to know there's a records, difference obviously. between being, you know, punk rock and this and just being smart, you know, like, it's not necessarily like, we're just like, fuck you, fuck you, you know, I'll never be in the Best Buy or in Kmart or whatever like that, whatever, you know what I mean? To us, our music is our cause, that's it. You know what I mean? Like, personally, we have issues like I don't like sweatshops and you don't like this or whatever. You know what I mean? But our cause, and that's it, is just about our music, getting our music, expanding people's minds, pushing the boundaries, you know, getting people, a, 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 you know, handful, a small handful of people away from the crap that's out there. Yeah. And so, you know, to us, it's always, it's never been an option to try to get ourselves in front of more people. But, like, there's a difference between, you know, you just have to realize the ethics have a, uh, you know, there's, there's an ethic behind it. This isn't necessarily just stubbornness and like everything sucks unless it's small and underground. Right. It's just about being smart and not and, and being able to continue doing, you know, uh, continue with your vision and be as smart as possible with that to maintain that so you can do it as long as possible. But ba So back to what you were talking about earlier, though, um, it still has to be fun, though. I mean, you have to have a good time doing it, otherwise it's a fucking drag, right? So oh, somehow yeah, sure. you're able to That's why we fart every five minutes. Yeah, so it's, it's like <laughs> there's, there's two sides to the coin, which is you want to go out there and, and, and take a stand and, and do something just that's about the music and without any bullshit, but you want to have a good time doing it at yeah. the same time, right? I mean, we all have we also all have our own personal agendas to some degree, and if the band can be a vehicle for that, then so be it, but... You mean think, lyrically or well, like... No, I mean, in any, you know, in any way, I think we all... No, I, I mean, if anything, not lyrically. You know, I don't think... I don't think that my personal agenda should have an effect on what Greg sings about, because personally, I'd like to keep that out of the band. It's just kind of... If the band gives me a platform that I can use later or outside of it, then so be it. And I think everybody should have that right. Do you ever? So do you guys ever bring any of that stuff? Like, I mean, obviously as a band, collectively, most interviews and discussions like with press or radio are going to be about the record, the band, blah, blah, blah. How often do you get a forum we, individually to say, here's something that's important to me? Or, or do you ever do that? I mean, there's been little circumstances where Liam's been interviewed by, like, PETA for being, you know, he's a vegetarian and a vegan, and, you know, a lot of what he had to say was probably not what they wanted to hear, but it was cool that because he's in a band, he got to say it, you know, and... and uh, I don't really agree with PETA, honestly, but they gave me, you know, the closest platform that I could get, you know? And, um, um, you know, and, and as a band, like, there's some things we've had, like, we've taken, Planned you know, we've had, or we've something had like, like voter registration at our at our shows and stuff like that and while we never said to anyone like who you should vote for or what you do we did think just like how we're trying to you know keep people's minds open and like push them to like inquire and just like you should be like yo find new music don't accept what's given to you it's the same in every aspect of life you know what i mean there. yeah no yeah, be educated know what's out there little corner of the world <clears throat> yeah like register to vote and then like it's up to you to to figure out what you think is you know. we're starting to we're gonna as a company get involved with uh rock the vote mm-hmm right. Um, because, you know, they're always looking for artists to do PSAs and to just reach to a, a different level of people who haven't really um, done. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Dude, that was so wet. That was disgusting. <laughs> oh, my God. That's what you call a pair of flop of piddle. <laughs> Wait, what did you call it? A pair of flop of piddle. Oh, dude. <laughs> Gil taught me that. Yes, yeah, because he's yeah, not but... vegetarian. He's, you know, like, they're really nice. kind of, like, musty. Oh, dude. Ben had a stripper fart in his face last night. On no my way. face. Or in his face. Touch oh, it. Get out of here. Wow. Are you serious? It actually bubbled on my face. <laughs> it felt like the wind off oh, of it. It smelled dude. like green apples, actually. Did you do something to make her mad or what? No, I asked her to do if she would be she interested. She requested in it. Fetish. Doing Are you seriously? That. Well, she said she thought she was going to freak me out, you know, like stripper, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm going to tell him I fart and freak him out. And I was like, you, you really can't freak yeah, me out on. by that. I mean, <laughs> you know. So, like right on your cheek. Just boom. I so said, what was slap the, me with a kiss, baby. What was the what was the tip like? Uh, that's the most important question, I think, in this thing. Yeah. Did you change your drawers? <laughs> that's her tip. <laughs> was it like, hey, here's twenty bucks, you get no, to some cheeks? No, I, I didn't you, tip. Was it like, trust me. I, did, was it? Wait, I got money to spend on strippers. Was it like that extra thirty? No, bucks it was for the like room kind of thing. she was just walking. Up, she was doing some stripping. <laughs> And then she yeah, got off I the know. stage and was hanging out next to me. I love the direction. And somehow we got in this conversation, <laughs> and somehow I ended up getting farted on my face. Uh, I, I, I can't really ex connect the dots anymore than that, but but anyhow, back somehow to it has to do with 
registering to rock vote. Back to yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rock the vote. Um, well, anyway, I mean, it, uh, that's... It's it's funny how many people seem to be pissed off these days about what's going on in hey. the world, but they don't want to vote about it. So it's cool that you guys are trying. You know to what's hilarious? It's when fixed are, anyway. What's when, it going to do? When people are like, you know, like, uh, you know, like George Bush sucks. Like, guess what, man? Like, you should have been around like three years ago. We had a little thing called an election. You could have, you know, yeah, could have not voted for him, you know. But now people are like, yeah. Now like dudes like that are in raging against the machine and say we're gonna put the nail in the coffin of George Bush. It's like actually the end of his four year term. Is gonna put That's the nail gonna, yeah. in the coffin. <laughs> I don't like, know, dude. I mean, honestly, I would not be surprised at all if like they staged some kind of little. Uh, uh, it's not gonna be a military change. It will not be a military coup. I hope not, man. It's not I wouldn't be. Su- I just wouldn't be surprised if like right before the elections, some kind of thing happens. They try to they, attack Iran. Everybody talks about it, but there's not gonna be a military. Yeah, coup. Never there hasn't. There. It, it's been discussed ad nauseum why there couldn't be. I, that's my personal No, no, I'm opinion. not saying military coup. I'm just saying that, like, I wouldn't be surprised if some kind of thing happens that puts everything Extends on pause the term for a minute. Or something. Right, right. Because, like a know, military right. coup of them no, invading like a, Iran? No, like, no, like, <laughs> no, like, <laughs> like some kind of major terrorist event that makes everything go on pause for a minute. Right, right. Oh, of course, I wouldn't, you know, that they That they knew was going to happen. You anyway. don't think Hillary's going to throw down? Look, as long as the song <laughs> hit, Let the Bodies Hits the Floor doesn't come out again, yeah. right. yes. they should calm down. It's been a while yeah. since we've all been, you know, pumped up with that jam, so. As long as, uh... Who, who if Godsmack God doesn't God put Smack out another like army <laughs> song, we're gonna be all right. Yeah, if there so wasn't Godsmack, there, go, there you go. If there wasn't Godsmack to make songs for commercials for the army, we wouldn't, we have, wouldn't an have an army. army. See, if people be... want us to stop, you know, invading other countries, tell Godsmack to stop, stop making, songs, making music. Man. Because when dudes <laughs> that are on the brink, if like you're on the brink of like I'm gonna go fuck up an Iraqi, like you're on the brink of it. Like you hear like dun 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 dun, dun, dun uh, and you see a dude, dude jump see, out of a helicopter, dude, you're like, I know. you're like, yeah, shit, yeah, God. and then you just jump, yeah. you're just I, ready. I was like, I saw that, and I was like, oh man. My, bro- my brother was, <laughs> my brother's just about to get out of the army after doing his tour of duty, and you should see him. I mean, when that song comes on, it's like Lou Ferrigno. I it's, mean, it's, it's just, just change. It's, 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 it's insane. It's, it's the mindset. It's wow. really scary. It's like a yeah. werewolf, dude. Yeah, it's, it's like the were- Those songs are like like werewolves turn into wolves when the night comes out. You know. Well, what the fuck else is there to do? I mean, if you're in that head or and you're around that all the time or if you're in Iraq or something like that, I mean, it's not like, you know, if you come home and you hang out with, like, your family and you go to the park and, like, you watch a little TV, you know, you chill. But, you know, if you're around that negative shit all the time, I mean, I guess you're going to soak it up a little bit. You were, you were saying that your brother's there now. Uh, no, actually, he's he's home now. Oh, well, he, he He will be. He, he'll be officially out. Uh, pretty much the day the record comes out, actually. Oh, really? But Honestly. I'm not in any way saying don't support the troops. I'm not yeah, saying that at all. Right, you know, right, right. I'm not troops. saying I support the troops. That is a, you know, <laughs> people over there are fucking, you know. Say don't support Godsmack. But just don't support Godsmack. I'm not saying don't support troops. Once you're already over there, you know, that's serious, <laughs> serious shit going on over there. Right now, Ben's pissing in a bottle, and it's totally killing the whole, whole thing. <laughs> Ignore it, I'm it'll really go away. I'm glad the Charlie Rose show is not filming this right now. <laughs> Um, so what, 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 Blix was on yesterday. Uh, with and your, we were on today. With yeah. your whole rock the vote thing, are you gonna? Are you trying to push people to a certain political party, or are you just pushing people to vote in pinch general? It, dude, pinch it. Right, right. Oh, cool, shit. cool. Rock the vote is just about registering. Oh. Dude, I really don't want to get pissed on the, on our on our on our sound dampening material. You won't. So dude, it's great for acoustics. So try not to throw anything at his penis. We need that to be as steady as possible until he's done. Easy, easy, easy. Pinch it. Pinch it. I like the body. Oh, oh god. There. Oh, that was there. overflowing. I think the bodies are hitting the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna get floor. up and actually go to the bathroom. But <laughs> like a <laughs> like a civilized oh. human. Oh my god. I'll clean that up. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get anybody in here to maybe lick it up? Uh, there's some. Uh, uh, there's some uh, we got we got paper towels. Uh, right are we here. still on like live right yeah, now? Yeah, still on oh live, yeah. God. 100 percent live right oh, now. Jesus. Is there anything else you guys want to get out there to fans? Or before we even do that, maybe we should talk a little bit about the gear you guys are rocking tonight and the gear you guys rock in general. What what have you guys found to be your? Can we just talk about the gear we rock in general? Yeah, yeah. let's do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, tonight was a little bit of a compromise for you kids at home. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So so hey, Jeff, yeah, what are what are some companies out there that I'll have been helping you guys out? I'll take this um, ben and I used the uh, Mesa Triple Rectifier. I mean, there's a lot of amps out there that you know that are like loud and sound. Yeah, and you see a lot of, ballsy, a lot of kids you know, in, like, but the hardcore genres. But I really feel yeah. like the Mesa, you know, the Mesa stuff is really consistent. It sounds great. Durable as hell. It's as loud as fuck. Um, it's yeah, and that's the, that's really the main thing is like for a touring band, you need something that's going to be reliable. And there's a lot of other stuff out there that you know. Uh, 
you never know it'll just crap out on you but i've never had no a single wrong. problem with with a mesa amp and i own a, a ton of their stuff what kind of tubes do you put in there just six all six tubes just the standard Straight mesa tubes yeah. yeah 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 Cool. What about um, you know, what about like the drum kit and everything else? Well, thanks. Shout out to Kevin over there for letting me use his kit tonight. Um, I endorse Orange County Drums. Uh, they're making me a uh, acrylic kit. I recorded on the album with a really nice acrylic kit cool. instead of wood. Um, Any particular reason is that? Yeah. You well, you know, I, we all heard the wood kit, and you know, it was like. It was fine, but then we heard the acrylic kit, and we realized there was a fucking right, big right. difference. So, um, so yeah, that was the call. Then I, I endorsed Zildjian cymbals, Promark drumsticks, Remo drumheads, and DW hardware and pedals. Cool. Uh, I endorse GNL guitars and uh, or basses, I should say. Um, first act took me up with a pretty sweet axe. Nice. And uh, otherwise, Ampeg, I'm, I'm a big fan of just the simple Ampeg 810s and uh, the classic heads. It's got some kick to it, though. Yeah, and uh, I'm, re I'm a big fan of the SVT VR head right now. That is my... Uh, How'd that come? How'd you come across that? Uh, it, recording, we, uh, when we were doing the bass tracks, we, um, we recorded direct through a Sans Amp pedal, which is kind of like the... Uh, that's the secret weapon. Okay. For all you bass players at home, that the, the Sansamp bass driver DI. That's what it was. That is the secret weapon. But, uh, shh, shh. Too late. Don't tell anyone. Uh, about yeah, endorsers. <laughs> 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 um, anyway, uh, we recorded uh, some direct tracks and then reamped through a. Okay. Uh, and uh, you guys can Wikipedia reamping. If you don't know what that means, Wikipedia is the best thing. But ever, uh, by the way. basically, we reamped through Who an SBT VR, shit. and uh, it long. was it was just a killer. You know, I was I'm stoked about the bass tone, and uh, I think that that had part, you know, cool, a big part in why. So. Very very nice. And uh, and Ernie Ball strings, ESP guitars, as well. Right on. ESP guitars all the way. Cool cool. Is that something you've been playing forever? Or? Uh, no, I mean, I just recently started playing them, you know, since I've been in Dillinger, but right. they take Sam a beating. They, they Samson uh, wireless stuff might might work on tour. We're going to try. Yeah, we're, <laughs> this is your uh, first tour, or you will be going out on the road with that? We're gonna yeah, try we just wireless started this time. working with Samson on cool. a bunch of stuff and trying out some new things and stuff, so it's cool. Very cool. Well, guys, the record's out November 13th. Any last words you want to leave with fans? Uh, buy it or the terrorists win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Well, guys, thanks so much for coming in here. Of course, you can check myspace.com slash Dillinger Escape Plan for all the up-to-date info on what you guys have going on. Of course, some video clips there, new music yeah. possibly being thrown up there. The record out November 13th, buy it at iTunes. Well, any other retail stores around the country people can grab it at? And probably, you know, everywhere. if you don't see it, ask for it, you know. And Definitely. Yeah, it's a big deal. Create the demand. Yeah, man. We, Hell yeah. We need your support. Shit, yeah. Man. Support indie. Shit, yeah, yeah, is what I meant. Support, <laughs> support small... Small stores, too. Yeah, if possible. Yeah. There's not Mom many of them shops. left, yeah. you know. Totally, totally. Do you hit a lot of those out on the road? Yeah. Well, there's actually going to be some promotion from uh, this store called Newberry Comics. Oh, cool. In yeah, Boston, yeah. which is a really great store that still, you know, is around and puts out a lot of cool underground music and things like that. And we're going to be doing some advanced uh, copies, like signed, nice, you know, nice. albums or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, probably put a few pubes in a couple yes. of them, you know. I ordered a CD Select from Newberry Comics on Amazon, and I never got it. <laughs> I guess that's Amazon's. Uh, don't buy it from Amazon, I guess. But I don't well, know. Thanks so much, guys, for coming in here. Of course, like I said, November 13th, the record comes out. Yep. Check out, you know, iTunes, Amazon, wherever you want to pick this record up. It's and I want my nasty. John Cage CD. <laughs> I work. I work. Thirteenth, check it out. I works right. See us on tour. Works. It's gonna be cool. What? Course, what? MySpace.com slash Dillinger Escape Plan for all the up to date info. Gemnow.com slash Dillinger Escape Plan. Give a little shout out to little Ray Ray man. I know you got a couple days left in jail. I'll see you when you get out, man. <laughs> Big baby Miss blue. You. Big shout out I'm to see little Ray Ray. Tim, my, my, my boy, uh, Outcast, my mom. Uh, Ron John. <laughs> and, <laughs> Yeah. Well, guys, thanks so much again for coming down. in here. Right. Bitch, I'm the boss. Jamnow.com slash Dillinger Escape Plan. Feel free to come back, check this interview out, check out the exclusive performances here, and interact with the band. Yeah. Guys, thanks so much again, and this has been another exclusive night of music here on Jamnow.com. Jamnow.com. Later, dudes. 
Cool. Can we hear our performance? Can we hear the whole interview?